Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome, everybody, to Word of Truth Fellowship. I'm excited to be with you guys today. I'm excited um, not just for the message that that Father has given me, um, which I've kind of I kind of wrestle with a little bit, but um, just because it's Sabbath. This is the day that, that he said during creation that is going to be holy. And so it, it, always, it always makes me feel joyous when I'm, I get to be in the presence of the Almighty on his holy day because he called me holy. And so it's, it's a beautiful feeling, and I hope you feel that as well. And I'm... I'm I'm always just flabbergasted. The fact that that I can I can come into the presence of the Almighty to the the creator of heaven and earth to the to the one who who brought fire down for Elijah and the and against the 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 prophets of Baal and and I I'm able to to be in front of in the presence of of the one who commissioned and and brought the, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. I'm just, I feel flabbergasted all the time. Are we getting a double echo? Just turn off the, the other, not that one, the other one. The uh, Your speaker's right there next to you. Not through there. There you go. Just turn them off on the side where your hand is on the right hand side your right hand side no 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 your right hand side where your hand is physical physical where the piece of paper are right there on the bottom just turn it off and see if that helps see if that helps and then you could just turn it off later all right so <laughs> i'm not sure what was going on there we got a double echo Good. Okay. Amen. So it's something going on here. I mean, we're still trying to work out all the little kinks, but um, I am excited to let you guys know as well. Um, we're going to be trying, anyways, uh, after next uh, next Sabbath, uh, probably next Sabbath or sometime during the week before, uh, we'll be getting our internet in. We're able to get it through through Verizon at the moment. Um, <clears throat> which is tremendously cheaper than anything else, and so we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to do a small broadcast from um, using the the stuff that they have, and so I'm gonna the stuff that we're getting in for the internet and everything, and and we're gonna try to to get it done that way, <laughs> uh, but we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of tests so. If you see something on Facebook or or on uh, on YouTube, that's that's a it, it'll be a, simply a test. So just kind of letting you guys know. Um, but I will put it on there so that way you guys aren't like, "What's going on? Is something special going on?" No, it's just we're just testing out. We're going to be testing out the equipment and um, making sure that the internet's going to work because hopefully, within just a few short weeks, we'll be able to actually have start having services in our building. Uh, we've been doing. A lot of uh, different little renovations and and um, <clears throat> little updates to <clears throat> excuse me to make it a little nicer in there. It's taking a little bit of time, taking a little bit of a uh, little extra energy because I've been working and then going over there and doing uh, and then our our Sundays are are pretty much been filled over there <clears throat> except for this last Sunday we weren't able to to really do do anything over there. But um, we've cleared out quite a bit. We've gotten a lot of the, we've got new doors, the plumbing. Um, I just have to fix the sink inside. We got, we're able to get a new sink, uh, do new plumbing inside. So I just have to put the, the sink drain and then we'll actually have a, a working bathroom so we can actually begin to use the building. <laughs> Amen. So we're, we're slowly getting to the process. Um, continue praying, continue praying for us that, you know, 
Father, just make time, you know, give grant me the time too to and the the favor within all these places to to get certain things because I'm just so amazed at some of the favor. I mean, just like the the internet, just the fact that we're getting internet there. Um, calling one place was going to be about three hundred dollars a month. Uh, looking at an at an online quote. It was going to be about a thousand dollars a month, and then even uh, two of the other ones, the cheaper ones, was going to be about 150, 120, give or take around there. And then now with what what we're going to get, um, Yehovah, uh, uh just thank Yehovah for for the favor that He's given. It's going to be about an, like sixty bucks. So we're able to do it because because I've been a, a Verizon customer for for so long then they're able to do it for almost nothing. Even the equipment itself, we're getting it half off. It's something that, that should cost about 200, 200 bucks. It, oh. uh, that is not going through. But um, yeah, so we were able to get it really, really cheap. Something like I said, something that should have costed two hundred dollars is only going to cost us uh, less than a hundred dollars. Um, you know, so it's it's just it's amazing. I'm just so so grateful. Uh, if we got cut off, I apologize. I don't know what went on. Um, that was beyond my scope. <laughs> but um, before we get into some praise and some worship in the word and and praise and worship in song i want to i want to praise in in prayer so before we do anything else let's just thank the almighty and invite him into this place even though he's already he's already here i i i i stand on the promise that where two or three are gathered in his name there he is going to be so Father, we just come before you and we thank you and we glorify you and we praise you for all that you've done and for all that you are. Father, you are the light unto our feet. You are the lamp unto our path. Father, you are the one who makes a way out of no way. You're the, you're the one, Father, who, who, who puts direction when it seems chaotic. Father, you bring peace in the midst of turmoil. And we thank you for all that you've done, Father, in our lives because you've, you've taken our situations and you've, you've turned them, Father. You've taken us from places where we, we were on a path to destruction, Father, and you've put us on the right path. So I thank you for that, Yehovah. I ask right now, Yehovah, that you forgive us of anything that we've done wrong, any sin, any in fracture, Father, that we've done, anything where we've crossed the line, let us be renewed in our spirit. Let us have that renewing of our mind. And let us just come before you boldly. Show us, Father, the areas that we need to work on. Reveal those hidden things. Father, even if there are little things in our homes where we, we forgot that they're there, Father, show it to us, Father, so that we can remove those things. And I just praise you today, Father, because I know that we have the victory. I know, Father, that you have given us peace. And I, I stand on the promises, Father, that you're going to be with us always. So I thank you and I glorify you. Amen. No distortion. Hmm. Is the is the little lights up on top, Miho, working for the, the internet box? On the very top, Louis. On the very, very top. Can you see all the lights on that, that internet box? No, no, no. The internet box, meal. Where it says Xfinity. Is 
it so um And we just got a red on the deal, huh? Does that bottom say? Read that to me, Louis. Honestly, I have no idea why things are going off. Everything, if all those are working up there, I can't see nothing. So, give me um, yeah, click on the waiting real quick, and then so we're gonna go to a. Quick sure what's going on online uh, that one I couldn't tell you I'd, everything's working on our end so unless it's a a um, internet problem that's that's something that I have no control of but in Yeshua's name that'll stop um, if if this comes out really really choppy uh, I'll still upload the video up onto onto YouTube if I need to do that so it, it, it should be it'll still record just fine so but like i said i'm 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 not gonna let anything hinder my praise <laughs> so it's amazing because father put put this song in my heart and i want to sing it I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy, 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 joy. I've got joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. It doesn't matter what's going on. I've got joy, joy. Joy, 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 I've got joy like a river in my soul. The devil can't take it. I've got joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got joy, 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 joy. I've got joy like a river in my soul. Oh, cause victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind, cause victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind, victory today is mine. Oh, when I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew Jehovah wouldn't bring me out. I fell down on my knees, cried, Lord, have mercy, please. I got up shouting, I've got the victory, so victory is mine. 
Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind. Cause victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind. Cause victory today is mine. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, my God, not dead. He's alive, oh, my God, not dead. He's alive, oh, my God, not dead. He's alive, God, not dead, not dead. He's alive. Well, praise the Lord, everybody, because he's not dead. Praise the Lord, everybody. He can fix any problem, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind, cause victory today is mine. When I woke this morning, I didn't have no doubt. I knew Jehovah would bring me out. I fell down on my knees, crying, Lord, have mercy, please. I got up shouting, I've got the victory. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Amen. Victory is mine. Amen, amen. <laughs> Father, I know that Satan wants to stop. Satan wants to stop your praise. Satan wants to take our joy. But Father, no man can take our joy. No, no circumstance, no problem, no issue. It doesn't matter what it is, Father. We're still gonna, we're still gonna praise your name. We're still gonna worship you. We're still gonna learn of you. And I rebuke Satan, and I rebuke his, his, his minions, and I rebuke, Father, any, any of the things that want to that wanna just hinder your word from going forth. So I just praise you, Yehovah. And I invite your spirit, Father, to just permeate this place and through the airwaves and through the, through the wires, Father, through the, through the computer. In Yeshua's name. <sighs> Father, I ask that you just use me to speak your word and only your word. That, Father, nothing comes out of my mouth that is that is not what you want what you want for your people and Father I declare victory over the issues of, of, that are plaguing your people over the, the sicknesses that want to take, take hold of your people Father I claim victory over them I claim healing Father for, for all those that need healing I claim wholeness, Father, for those that, that don't feel like they're, they're, like they're whole, like they're complete, Father. I, can't, I claim joy, Father, for, the, for the, all those that are, that are hurt and discouraged.
claim, claim life, Father, for those that have been told that they're going to die. And I declare peace in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of struggle, in the midst of hurt, and in the midst of pain. I declare your peace and your joy and your grace, Father, to just permeate your people. So that we can understand what your word says. So that we can live by your word, that we can walk by your word, that we can live, Father, according to your spirit. That's going to lead us into your word. So I thank you and I glorify you. In Yeshua's name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. So you may have your seats for just a moment. <clears throat> and today we're going to be dealing with the subject that plagues a lot of people that affects, I believe, everybody, is confusion. And so that's why I entitled this message, Confused. <laughs> but I encourage you to, to visit the website, share if you've got a moment, share on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, Twitter, Instagram, uh, follow us, and... Um, you know, I have to I have to 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 say something because I thought it was it was really interesting today. Is I've had a little a little container, and I I put you know little screws and and little the little nails in them and in this little container, and I've had it for a long time. And I I always just thought it was a red and white container, and uh, I was looking at it, and for whatever reason. Because I've been asking Father, okay, you know, now that we're getting this new this new building, I want to make sure that that it's it's dedicated wholly to you, and that there's nothing there's nothing lingering, you know, even in my own home, that can transfer there, because we know things things go, you know, spirits will will go with you or with items and different things like that, and and I mean it's evident in Scripture. And so I've had this little can, and it's this little red and white can. And I never paid attention to it. I was just, you know, threw my little things in there. And, and um, But for whatever reason, today, I was looking at the can. I looked at this little can, and, and um, I saw that, that it wasn't just red and white, but it was, it had a little reindeer, and it had a little phrase on there that, said something about have a Merry Christmas or something. And I was like, how did I not see this? For I've had this thing for years, and I've never paid attention to it. <laughs> and uh, so I, I looked at it, and I was like, okay, Father. <laughs> I've been asking you to clean, you know, if there's anything else lingering. And so I got that, and I dumped it out, and I threw the thing in the trash. And I was like, okay, we're getting rid of this thing. <laughs> and so it, it's just... For me, it's just proof that when you ask Father to help you with something, He's going to help you, and He He's gonna He's gonna watch over you, and that He is gracious. You know, His grace is sufficient because I mean, He could have killed me. He could have quit the whole broadcast thing and and not gotten us a building and not gotten you know not not given us, you know, all the, the blessings that he's given us and because I've had that little thing, but he didn't. He was patient and he, it's just, it just amazes me that even in our, the things that we don't even know we're doing wrong or have that are wrong, he's still willing to just show us little by little. 
And so I'm I'm amazed and, and like I said, you know, that thing got thrown in the trash and but <laughs> you know, it but that's my heart is I want to please the Almighty in every little thing and you know, I don't want I don't want nothing to hinder his presence in this place and in, in this ministry. I don't want anything to hinder it. But anyways my little confession to you guys at the end of this teaching you will be able to ask questions you will be able to make comments get clarity on anything that has been taught uh, able to give a testimony if you have a testimony uh, able to get prayer if you have any prayer and we'll be given an opportunity to support the ministry by your donations tithes and offerings so and continue praying for me because there's a few teachings that um, I want to bring, but I, or Father has put in me to, to bring, but I'm struggling on how to bring them. <laughs> and um, because they're topics that I, I don't like to deal with. <laughs> um, I personally don't like to deal with. I have no problem doing it for somebody else, but for me, I don't like doing it. So continue praying for me that Father show me how and and when to put, to to bring bring these topics out but today we're going to be looking at confused you know i chose this picture as well because it's sometimes we don't know what path to go on we don't trust the almighty and sometimes we we're going down a path and we begin to have this like What's going to happen if I go here? What's going to happen if I go there? And and how do I how do I deal with what happens when I go down this? When these people are going this way, how are they going to they going to react? And and you know all, all these things start to come into you, and it's like a storm is brewing inside of you because you don't know what's going on, and you begin to get confused. And then we say we're confused. I'm confused. I don't know what to do. This is, these are things that all of us have said. Every single one of us. You know, unless you're perfect. But I know I've said those things. I've said I'm confused. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to do it. I don't know what to do. And or when somebody's trying to explain something and you say, oh, wait a minute, I'm just confused. I don't, I don't, I'm confused. What's going on? And we say these things not realizing what we're saying. So we're going to look at, today shouldn't be a long teaching. But we're going to look at what scripture says about this topic. So we're going to go a little quick. But 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, For you may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all congregations, churches of the saints. So in all the congregation of the saints, there should be peace and not confusion. Because Yehovah is not the author of confusion. He brings clarity. He brings peace. But he never brings confusion. He was very straightforward to Adam and Eve. Even just to Adam when he spoke to Adam and said, you shall not eat of this tree. There's no, there's no confusion there. It's just direct. There you go. That's what you get. But the word confusion in the Greek is akastasia. And it's instability, disorder, commotion, confusion, tumult 
It's a state of disorder. Some, you don't know which way to go, how to do it, or everything's out of, out of its place. It's a disturbance even. So Yehovah is not instable or unstable. He says he's the rock that shall never be moved. If we stand on his word, we stand on the rock, we will never be moved. When we build our house upon the rock, it shall not tumble. It's not like sand which is, that's instable, that can move, that can shift. You know, that can, I mean, if you, you look at the, the deserts, the, the waves of the sand can change from moment to moment. With just a little bit of wind, though that, that one dune of sand would be gone in just a moment. So it's not unstable. Yehovah is not unstable. He is very stable. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. He is unchanging. So when it says, for God is not the author of confusion, He's not the author, He's not the beginner, the beginning of instability, of disorder, but He's the God of peace. That's why you can see in Romans and Titus and, and Philippians that he, he, uh, Paul constantly says, and the God of peace be with you. Things like that. You know, that, that's a phrase that, that we hear, uh, especially within, within uh, the different denominations and in preachers. You know, the God of peace. He's the God of peace. Because that's scriptural. He's, he is the God of peace. He's not the author of confusion, but of peace. <laughs> and then James, who Paul did not write the book or the letter of James. James, the brother of Yeshua, did, by the way. <clears throat> James chapter 3, verse 14 says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not. And lie not against the truth. The wisdom descendeth, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So, righteous people should produce righteous fruit. If you're not righteous, you're going to produce this other earthly, sensual, and devilish fruit, according to James. And this wisdom is earthly wisdom. But the wisdom of the Almighty is going to produce righteousness, and it's going to produce peace. But if there's not peace, there's envying and strife. And if there's a little bit of envy, where, oh, you know, basically meaning... I want what she has, or I want what he has. I mean, we can see pictures of that in, in Genesis all over the place. Look at Rachel, for instance. She envied her sister Leah. I, wanna, I want, you know, she's telling Abraham, or telling uh, uh, Jacob, you know, I, wa I want a child like Leah, and I, you know, because she's envying Leah. She doesn't have a, a, a son and this and that. And she's and then Jacob's like, well, why are you telling me? No. Leah and Rachel. Yeah, not Hagar. Hagar is Abraham. But Leah, or it shows, says Rachel was envying her sister. Because her sister was getting 
you know, son after son after son. And what happened? It was a competition. It ended up being a competition of who could have the most sons and who could who could be the, the best wife. So there was some confusion going on. For Jacob had to deal with all this stuff. And then what happened? For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. What happened towards the end of this? The sons of Jacob, of Leah and Rachel, they started doing some things that they shouldn't have been doing. There is some evil work that happened in them. There were some confusing things that happened in there. So where envying and strife is, there's confusion and every evil work. But this is New Testament. We're, we're dealing with, you know, the commands. We're how, how, to, how, to, how to live our life according to the commands. I mean, right? That's what we've been, that's what we're talking about. This is all in the New Testament. Deuteronomy 28. It's amazing because this curse this is in the, the curses department of Deuteronomy 28. When we don't keep the commands. He says, Yehovah, verse 28, Yehovah shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Now in some translations, it actually uses, it says, And Yehovah will smite thee with confusion and blindness, or madness and blindness and confusion. So he's going to bring us confusion of mind. Confusion of where we go. How do we do it? What do we need to do? How do we, what do we this? What do we that? And what if, what happens here? What happens that? You know, I don't understand. I don't get it. I'm confused. I'm this and that. He says, he's <laughs> going to bless you. He's going to bring this. If we don't keep his command. Just like in the Garden of Eden. They disobeyed. Right? They disobeyed commands. And then what happened? Now they had no idea what they're going to do. They were lost. They, they didn't have any direction any longer. They were put out of the provision of the the path of, of the protection of Yehovah. They were put out. And they didn't know what to do. And even before they were put out, what happened? They were confused. They didn't know, oh my God, I'm naked. What do I do? What do let's just put something, let's make some fig leaves. There was some turmoil. There was some disorder. And we can see, amazingly, the Torah uses the word confused or confusion two times. And only two times. And we looked at those a few weeks past when dealing with the sexual sins. With homosexuality and with incest. With a mom, a son sleeping with the mom and a... a person sleeping with an animal. It says those bring confusion in Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20. Those two things bring confusion. And those are the only places in the in the Torah where it uses the word confusion. In just about every single translation you can you can look in. But you can see over and over and over just like James says where envying and strife is there is confusion in every single work, every evil work. There's disorder. 
confusion means disorder. It's not just not understanding, but it's not having an order, not having a way to go. It's like a storm. When you're caught in a storm, you don't know which way is left and which way is right almost because there's all this, you know, thunders and lightnings and rain pouring down on you and, and you're just trying to get some get to some place where you're dry and and so you're disoriented. And Yehova says, that's what you're going to be. That's what you're going to feel when you don't keep my commands. You'll be confused. Now Isaiah talks a little bit about it as well. It says, Behold, Yehovah, make the earth empty and make it waste and turns it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, to with the giver of usury to him. So it doesn't matter who it is. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled. For Yehovah has spoken this word. And the earth mourned and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they have transgressed the laws, because they have changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. This is Isaiah speaking futuristic saying the earth is going to be wiped out because people have left the law of Yehovah, because they've changed His law, and because they've broken His covenant. And He says, Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth. So the earth is suffering because of our disobedience. That's why we got to live as holy as we can. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. So very few people are going to be left. You know, when Yeshua says that, the, that this road is narrow, he didn't pull that out of thin air. Isaiah prophesied this hundreds of years before Yeshua. And then he says, the new wine mourneth, the vine languisheth, and the merry-hearted do sigh. The mirth of tabrets ceaseth, they stop. The noise of them that rejoice ends. The joy of the harp stops. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. So when you remember the scripture when Yeshua says, no house divided will stand. If a house is divided, there's confusion in the house because there's two opposing views. There's two opposing uh, ideas or what, you know, however you want to put it. If, if there's two opposites, then that means there's two different, there's a division. When there's a division, there's confusion because now people who go into that house aren't going to know, okay, well, which way do we go? Do we go over here? Do we go with this one, this side, this side? It, it's confusion. So it falls. So there's going to be entire cities of confusion. Entire cities. And what's happening right now, we see it over and over and over. Cities who are accepting one thing but saying another. 
politicians saying, oh, yes, we believe in the Bible, but accepting the sins that the Bible says is wrong and saying, oh, no, it's okay. So there's confusion. There's confusion in our politics. There's confusion in the House of Representatives. There's confusion because there's Democrats and Republicans and Independents. There's confusion. Who do we go to? Which way do we go? The, there's confusion in our leadership. And then you have confusion within churches, in denominations. Because the pastor will say, oh, the law is holy and it is good. And they'll preach from from Deuteronomy saying we're not the head and we're, we're the head and we're not the tail. But then in the same voice, we'll say we don't have to keep the laws. We, don't, we can eat whatever we want. So there's confusion. The Bible says we, or they say, well, we stand on the, the in, in, unadulterated, infallible word of God. And the word of God says keep the Sabbath holy. And they say, oh, we don't have to keep that Sabbath. That's the Jewish thing. So there's confusion. And it says the city of confusion is broken down. No house divided is going to stand. This is why so many preachers fall. It seems like every month there's a different preacher falling from all kinds of different things. Or they're... Their buildings are going for sale because everybody leaves or, or I mean, all kinds of different things. I, I know in the past probably four years, I've never seen so many buildings that are religious center, you know, the, a denominational building for sale. More so than I have today. I mean... I've never seen in the last, all my years, I used to always see like every building that was considered a church building, you know, this denomination, that denomination, it was always, none of them were for sale. They never sold them. They're always full, all kinds of stuff. But then it seemed like in the past four years, it's like one building after another, up for sale, up for sale, up for sale. Jehovah's Witness, up for sale. Baptist, up for sale. Pentecostal, up for sale. Catholic, up for sale. And it's like, whoa, what's going on? There's prophecy, confusion. And it's amazing because dealing with in Isaiah, he also talks about idols. And he uses the exact same word. Just like we saw in Deuteronomy, that Father's going to bring some confusion if we don't keep his commands. He says, Behold, they're all vanity. Their works are nothing. They're molten images. They're idols are wind and confusion. They're worthless. They're nothing. They're tossed by every wind of doctrine. Their images are not stable, but they're instable. They're disorderly because they can't, they can't put order to anything. A statue of the Virgin Mary <laughs> or the Lady of Guadalupe cannot put order to anything because they don't have a mouth to speak. They have a mouth, but they can't speak. And the only reason they have a mouth is because the person carved it in it. But they can't do anything. They can't speak. They can't direct. So they're disorderly. And it's the same concept from here throughout all of Scripture, where there's envying and strife, there is confusion and all manner of evil work. That's why we see over and over and over Scriptures that deal with, that show Israel when they begin to leave the commands, 
Now they're in open territory and they kind of do whatever they want. There's some disorder. Stuff happens. They don't know what to do. And they're, they're just pulled every which way. I mean, there's a a great but terrible example in 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 the chronicles or in the judges I'm sorry when it talks about the benjamites because there's no order a levite goes goes into a city of benjamites and they they're they're wanting to do all kinds of things to this levite and they do they do to detestable things to the point to where his concubine is left at his doorstep dead and naked. Because there's disorder. Because there's confusion. There's no, it says there's no king in the land. There's no judge in that day so because there was no leadership good leadership there was confusion and they began to do all kinds of detestable and evil things not just worshipping idols but all kinds of things and we can see it all over the place That's why James kind of head back into James. James chapter 1 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. If you don't know, ask so that you would know. That giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. So Yehovah does not, does not, Hold back wisdom from us. All we have to do is ask. It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. What was that again? Confusion. Tossed. Disorder. Don't know which way you're going. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything. So if we are not Walking by faith, we're like the wind, we're like the, the wave of the sea driven about in the wind. And it says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. In a couple of the versions, it'll tell you a double-minded man is confused in all his ways as well. But he's unstable. Because he doesn't know where to stand, where to go, what to do, what to say. How do we do this? You know, what do I believe? Do I believe this? Do I believe that? Do I, how do I walk in this? What do I, I mean, what, what's going on? And I mean, it just un, <sighs> unstable, faithless. Because he's walking, asking Yahweh, oh, I need wisdom. But, oh, I need healing, but, wait a minute, Yehovah says, if you want healing, go ask in faith, and that's it, you're healed. By His stripes, you're already healed, so you just have to go in faith. You just got to ask in faith, you got to pray in faith, that's it. But if we say, oh, I'm, I want to be healed, but I don't know if God wants to heal me. What? That's a double-minded person. It's like, <laughs> it's even saying, I, I know God wants me to prosper. I want to, I want to prosper in everything I do. But I don't know, I really, I'm not sure. 
I'm confused in the way he wants me to prosper. He says, if you keep my commands, you're going to prosper. <laughs> you will be the head and not the tail. So we can't be double-minded. We can't be confused. And the world will bring us confusion. The world will put things in our minds and it, it, it'll stir up a storm within us. Saying, oh no, we can't, you can't do this and you can't do that. Keep the studio mode up there, Mickey, please. Uh, you can't do this and you can't do that. But when the scripture says, no, you can do all things through Messiah, but the world says you can't. So if the world says you can't, and, and the, uh, but the Bible says you can, who do I believe? I, oh, I don't know, I'm confused now. No, we can't say those kind of things. Because if Yehovah is not the author of confusion, who is? Who is the one who confused Adam and Eve in the first place? Who is the one who put disorder in Adam and Eve in the first place? It wasn't Yehovah. It wasn't the creator of heaven and earth. It was Satan. That old serpent. So if we say we're confused, if we live a life of being confused, We're opening a door to the enemy, saying, here, come in. We can't let the enemy come in anywhere. And this is one of those places where the enemy is, can easily come in, is when we say, I'm confused. Because that's his realm. He is in the realm of confusion. Not the Almighty. Ye Yehovah is not... Is not with confusion. He's not, he doesn't make you double minded. He's, we're one mind, one accord in Messiah, right? One faith, one Lord, one baptism. He is the head, we are his body, so we're one mind. Not double minded. We're not confused. We're not starting a storm up inside of us to where we're, when it's dark and, and, it's, and, it, and it's storming around and we don't know what to do and where to go. And we don't, we're not in that. He says he's a lamp. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I'm going to know where I'm going. I'm not going to be confused even though the storm is raging and it's going all crazy. I know where I've got to go if I'm following his word. Even though I may not see very far, even though I may not see the whole picture, I may not see what's going around, there may be even worse things that are happening next to me, but you know what? I know what path I'm on and I'm not going to be confused. But we're going to be walk steadfast. We're going to walk that narrow path and not be double-minded like which i don't know which path i can't see the path father you're not with me i'm not keeping your command so what path do i need to go what's your will for my life how do i do this and what do i do and where do i go no be sober be vigilant peter says in chapter 5 verse 8 because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. We have to know where we're going. We cannot be double-minded. We have to know where we're going because if we don't, we may end up eaten by the lion and not the lion of Judah. But I want to show you this verse real quick because I hear this all the time. But we never take a closer look at it. So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the diabolos, the traducer, specifically Satan, is a false 
accuser, a devil or a slanderer. So it's interesting because the word devil can also be, you can interchange it with false accuser. And if someone is bringing a false accusation, what happens? It brings confusion. Who do we believe? That's what happened in Acts chapter 19 with Paul. The whole, the whole city was in an uproar. They, went to the, they even went to the, the, the theater because there were people that were like, they were in an uproar for, and they don't even know why. But there was because it all started with some false accusations against Paul. So the adversary, the one who brings false accusations, not just the devil, uh, not just the, the guy with red horns and a pitchfork and a tail, but a false accuser. Uh, reminds you of, uh, you know, those people that like to just gossip all day long. False accused were seeking whom he may devour is literally to drink down that is gulp entirely to engulf to drown to swallow up what happens in confusion when you're confused everything else is like i don't know what else to do i'm oh, i'm confused and this and that and you constantly you know you don't know which way to go, where to turn. It's You're engulfed in your confusion, so you don't know where to go because you've got either false accusations, you've got, you've got different paths that people are bringing to you, you've got different ideas that are bringing to you, and then you have the what Scripture says, and you don't know who to believe, you don't know if you should believe this or believe this person or that person that you've known for years and years and years. And it's, well, maybe we should believe this person because he's been a pastor and a minister for, for 15, 20, 30 years. And we should just believe him because he knows the word better than we. He's read the Bible through and through 15 times. There's confusion. But Peter says, be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, who he can drown. He's not giving you life like Yeshua, where living water is supposed to flow. He's not leading you by green pastures and, and sitting you down by the brook. But he's drowning you like the days of Noah. He got the rest of them. He got the rest of the world to not believe what Noah brought and literally drowned them. I mean, even Korah, when we remember last week, we looked at, at Numbers chapter 16. When Korah, what happened? They brought false accusations against Moses and against Aaron, and they they began to to strive. They were, they were striving with them, you know. They were kind of arguing with them. They were kind of fighting with them, and then they're envying because they said, "Oh, Moses, we're all holy. Who are you, Aaron? Who are you that you you guys are should be the leaders over us?" Envying and strife. And what happens at the end of that? The earth opened up and devoured. All because they were striving and envying. See, this is why, you know, we see things in the New Testament, but we have to read the Old Testament to really understand why they were saying some of the things they were saying. Because if we don't read Numbers, if we don't read Genesis or Exodus, even if we don't read the prophets, then when Peter or when James or when, 
when Paul began to, to, to cite things or they begin to, to tell and explain Torah and explain the scriptures, we were not going to get it. I didn't for a long time. I'm still learning. But this is one of those instances where you can see it, that the devil was just like that. False, false accusations. He was the false accuser. He wanted to bring down Aaron and Moses, who Jehovah had appointed leadership over the people there. And then, but the point was to devour them. Because that means there was less people that were going to hear the word, less people who, who could do damage to his kingdom. So he took them out. But they went with him. So I'm going to end with Proverbs 11, 18. It says, The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. So we can't be confused. We can't be like the devil who is a roaring lion. We can't be a false accuser. We can't be one who wants to bring things down. But we need to build up, right? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to build each other up. When two are walking by the way and one falls, we pick the other one up. That's why it's better when there's two or three gathered. Because, hey, when one falls, the other two can pick them up. Or the other one even. And we're not trying to be deceitful and, and cunning. And we're not trying to, to make our own things happen. But we're trying to do the work of Messiah and bring forth His gospel, His truth, His his life to the world. And we're supposed to all in one agreement go with that. Not try to be deceitful and do our own little, huh, try to do our own thing. But we all have one goal in mind. So to him that sows righteousness shall be a sure reward. And what does he say? He, I mean, Look, in the New Testament, there's crowns being given for our works, for what we do. And we're going to be judged by all the things that we say. So if we say, I'm confused, are we sowing righteousness? No. No. We're allowing the enemy to come in and take a foothold in our life. So we can't be confused. But instead we should walk on his on his his path, standing on his word, which is the rock, which is the path, which is the light that leads our path not confused, not disordered, but knowing where we're going. Because, yeah, even though we may not know exactly each single step that we're going to take, we may not know five years from now, we know the end result. I mean, it's right there in the book. We know the end result, where we're going what it's going to be like, what's going to be celebrated. You know, we're, we're going to know the lifestyle we're going to live. So we know the end result. We may not have the details in between. But that's why he's the light unto our path. Because he makes sure that we make it to that point. We're here at point A. We need to get point B. And he's going to light the, light the way. 
So we never have to be confused about anything. And remember, life and death are in the power of the tongue. So, let me bless you and we'll call this, call it an end, amen. So, Father, we thank you and we glorify you and we ask that you help us so that we be never, we never ever let the enemy come into our life. We never let the deceiver, the false accuser, ever take a foothold in our life. But we walk according to your word. Because your word is tried and true, and it is perfect, and it is just, and it is holy. So I ask that you protect your people, that you watch over them, that you guard them, that you send your angels round about them so that they're always confident and sure and never speak with their mouth, I'm confused. And never feel confused. But that we always walk according to your word. Father, guide them, protect your people. We thank you. Jehová te bendiga y te guarde. Haga resplandecer Jehová su rostro sobre ti y haya de ti misericordia. Jehová alce a ti su rostro y ponga en ti paz. Jehová bless you and keep you. Jehová make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Jehová lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. So I pray this has been a blessing to you. Uh, again, thank you all for your support. Thank you for, for the prayers for uh, and even just for uh, uh, dealing with whatever mishap was going on with the uh, with the internet. I'm not sure what was happening. Um, but um, I don't know. I, I, I just looked at it right now and I still see the little green light, so I'm assuming everything is good. <laughs> but um, continue praying for this ministry. Uh, share the teaching with others through social media. Comment, like our videos. Like I've said before, if you want to continue seeing the videos, make a comment um, on like on Facebook. And from what I understand is if you want to continue seeing the someone's um posts you just have to to uh co make comments on their vi on their posts and then they'll they'll pop up more often or whenever they make a comment they'll, or you know make a post they'll be there uh same thing with the the youtube videos if you don't like the videos um even putting a thumbs down is better than doing nothing <laughs> uh so you know continue commenting uh and also you know thank you again for your support use bill pay from your bank account that's the best option um because we actually get all of the funds um and it costs nothing um compared to using uh i still use we still you have paypal available because it's easier people use paypal so i just put i use it on there Again, just thank you, and then I know we have quite a bit of comments online, but a lot of them have to deal with uh, whatever was going on with the uh, the internet. So, any questions or comments here before we go into the internet and see on Facebook and YouTube? Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Yeah, Shabbat shalom. Um, I love today's teaching. It helped me sort through what I have been battling with in my head. Um, and I've been trying to see how I can kind of word it through, uh, I, I kind of want to share it, you know, through Facebook because, you know, I like people to go on the adventure 
that I'm going on with father. You know, this gets people to understand who I am as their sister through Messiah. And at the same time, <laughs> they could pray for my situations, pray for me, you know, and, and to also, you know, help me and guide me if they see something that's like, okay, maybe she's stuck right there and I can, I can help her, you know, they can, you know, private message me or they can even comment under my post. I love people's feedback because we're supposed to help one another. So um, that's why I share certain things and I express myself, you know, widely because I want people to know me. <laughs> this is who I am. Um, so here's the thing. This past weekend, um, we had went to take my mother-in-law to go get some ice cream. And we were... Uh, you know, we met up with a couple of friends, um, you know, that we, we know. And uh, they're, they're diehard Catholics. And so, and I love the fact that Pastor Marcus is teaching us a lot about Catholicism. Because there's a lot that even I, being a Catholic, didn't know, didn't know a lot of what he's teaching. It's like, wow, it's like now it's coming to light, you know. We did practice some of those things. Like today he talked about superstition, and I was like, oh, if I could tell you about my family. <laughs> Anyways, so we were there getting ice cream, and this lady, she tells, she asked us if we go to church, and we told her that we have our own fellowship. And she says, she goes, um, it doesn't matter if you guys have a fellowship. She goes, were you guys born um, Catholic? And we both said yes. We are born into the Catholicism. And she goes, well, here's the thing. If you are born a Catholic, then you are raised a Catholic. And guess what you're going to die as? And it just like, that took me to a big flashback to when my mother had told me the same thing when I had transitioned from Catholicism into uh, the apostolic faith. Little did I know that they were all <laughs> united in the same kind of stuff. But my mom told me the same thing. And this lady, she wouldn't give us an inch to hear anything we had to say. We wanted to, you know, just talk with her, you know, mildly, just try to explain uh, our viewpoints of, you know, why we were no longer there. And and she was adamant. Like, she, if she had uh, the holy water, we probably would have got baptized by her that day. And she was really, really mad. And even my mother-in-law was just staring at the whole thing. She, Cause she said she kept getting louder and louder and this is in you know it's in public property I and mean, we were there getting ice cream downtown and she just was she's but I, I couldn't say much to her because I was trying to study her I thought okay let me hear what she has to say now that I'm no longer there let me see how I can try to listen for once just to hear the heart of a catholic because even when i was one i didn't i didn't go out teaching or or telling people about catholicism it just wasn't it wasn't shown to me therefore i never practiced it myself so I thought well this is your chance just to hear her out study and 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 see how it is so that's why when you do run into more Catholics down the road if they have questions you'll know how to answer them and so she had put um a question out there that it was like huh like how do I answer that like she made a profound statement and okay the Catholics are very they're they love Mary don't get me wrong she was the Messiah's mother and you should you know respect your mom and dad and father expects that because it's also part of the commands you know honor thy mother and thy father but they are so gung-ho for Mary you say 
anything towards Mary and you just committed like 10,000 sins. I mean, she was so adamant to tell us that we're supposed to pray unto Mary and Mary will take your prayer and give it to the, you know, Jesus. And then Jesus will transfer the, the prayer requests to the father, you know? And so when we started talking about, or just even just telling her that Mary, you know, was a virgin in the beginning, but then she did have children that blew her lid. Well, anyways, back to the statement that had me bottled in my head was like, how do I answer her on that? Like, how would I answer that? Was when she said, the reason why we have to pray to Mary is because when it was the wedding feast that Messiah had went to, uh, Mary told Jesus what to do. Like, she, you know, Jesus didn't just do it out of thin air. He had to be told by his mom. And so therefore she goes us because Jesus told John, you know, take care of your mother when he was being crucified. Therefore, all of us are her children. And when we have a prayer request, we are supposed to go unto her and then she will tell Jesus what to do. And then Jesus will tell the, his dad, what, what next? And it's like, my gosh, like, okay, that's, I can see that argument why they, they're adamant because yeah, it does look like she could tell the Messiah what to do. It's like in my head, I was like, just keep that in your mind. You know, father will guide you in this type of, you know, um, argument you know you you're just hear her out that's all I could do so as I was praying I went into my prayer time with father and telling him about how how that conversation went and how I kind of lacked in in bringing stuff but at the same time I didn't feel I lacked anything because I told father she wasn't willing to hear me anyway so it would have just fell on deaf ears but now I'm I'm in your presence. Now help me to understand, you know. So this way, when I do come across someone who is willing to hear, I'll have you know better answers to give, you know. So um, what he bring to my mind when someone that has to say, you know, you were born this way, you were raised that way, so therefore you're going to die that way no matter what. He bring me Moses to my head. And it's like Moses was born in Egypt. He was raised Egyptian, but he didn't die Egyptian. He got taken out. And I said, okay, Father, I, I, I see that. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm not there. I, I've been pulled out, you know, so... He gave me Moses to my head and then, you know, just praying about other situations. Then he takes me to when other women had asked Yeshua, you know, prayer requests. And, you know, even though it wasn't his time to do it or he even tested their faith by it, but he still gave it to them. I mean, he took me to the lady that touched the hem of his garment and he even wondered, how did this come out of me? But because she knew where the source was at, she knew who, he, she knew deep down, she just needed to touch that, you know, him. The lady that, you know, asked for prayers for her daughter, and he, and he basically called her a dog, you know, and she told him even the dogs eat the crumbs from the bed it's just that faith that confidence you know so even if mary did go to her son she confidently knew her son was the one to turn the water into wine it's just about when you're ready to acknowledge the fact that he is the way the truth and the life and you just say okay that's where it's at you know you go and you just ask of him he might test you to see if you're gonna give up that prayer but if you just you know stay strong and and he sees that you are adamant that you love him and you know he's the way he's he, he'll bring it to pass you know yeah 
So when I when we left that conversation with her, finally, like what came to my head was people put a lot of um, attention towards gambling or like there's that expression, put your money where your mouth is. And I, I don't know if anybody remembers my prayer request last week that I I want to get to a, a stage with Father and, and with Messiah to where I start moving mountains. Just with that faith alone, just that knowing that he's right there backing me up, that he's going to use me to do that. I want to be where, like, you know, Elijah took on the you know, the priests and, and Baal, you know, I want to be like Moses, you know, I look at all these examples and I want to do something like that. So I'm saying that to say that I, I felt like I had an epiphany after that kind of ordeal with the lady and um, that aha moment, that like light bulb is like she was so adamant. And I told Father in my spirit, like, was that my moment to say, okay, instead of saying put your money where your mouth is, put your God where your mouth is? Because it seems like so much people are very adamant towards Mary. Well, Catholics are. You know, was that my moment to have said okay let's pray about it let's you, let's meet somewhere you know I don't know how to do it I don't I don't know if I'm on the right track but I see these examples where people fought in the spirit for father and he showed he had to wake up people you know through someone was that my moment to say okay you know let's you know, you pray to her for this one cause and I'll pray directly, you know, knowing that I have Messiah in me and let's see where it gets poured out. These things are just random thoughts going through my head. So I'm just, I'm asking for prayers. I want, I want Father to lead me in what I got to do next. I see where he gives me answers on how to, how to, answer certain people that will be willing but I also want to come out of that that phase of like if I pray for that person is it is it gonna happen is it not gonna happen I don't want that confusion or that doubt so I really do love today's teaching because it showed it showed me that you know confusion doesn't come from father it comes from the ways of everybody's tossed to and froze and, and lack of confidence. So that's my testimony and my prayer request to everybody. So Shabbat Shalom, everybody. So, Father, we come before you and we ask that you, you bless, you bless my wife, Father, you bless my wife, Janet, that she's, you give her that, that encouragement, that, strength and the tenacity father to just stand for your word no matter what and to be as elijah to where you prove to the rest of the people father that the idols are nothing and that you are everything so father i release your gifts within her i release your power your spirit to fill her afresh fill her more than already. Father, just do your will in her life. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read some read some of these comments from the from what I got here. Uh, Brother George Way says, Shabbat Shalom family. Uh, Marcus, Shabbat Shalom brethren and Messiah Yeshua. <clears throat> Amen. And then uh, George Shabbat Shalom again. I guess we, that's when we got cut off. Sarah uh, says Shabbat Shalom Mishpacha. Amen. And then uh, I guess there's a distortion. So at least the sound was coming through. <laughs> and then uh, 
Tammy Fleming says Shabbat Shalom. Junie Fleming says Shabbat Shalom. Word of Truth Fellowship family from New Jersey. Amen. Uh, says it's clear. Hear no distortion. Uh, I don't know what it was, but the whatever the internet was, it, I don't know if it was the internet or what it was, but like I said, everything was was here. Uh, I'm still getting there. Um, everything here seemed to be a fine, so hopefully that got all worked out for y'all. Shabbat Shalom, Brother George, and uh, from Tennessee, Brother Joel, amen. Shabbat Shalom. And then uh, go for Ray. Shabbat Shalom, amen. <laughs> and then uh says we're back, so I guess cut, cut off three times, oh man. So, and then uh, Sarah... Sarah also says, my husband and I have been truly blessed by our ministry. Thank you for your teachings. Being a, lat a Latino myself, I really appreciate the blessing at the end of your teaching in both English and Spanish. May Yah continue to bless your ministry. Amen. And that's one of the, the things why I changed from doing a from the Hebrew to the, the Spanish was because I figured, well, the people, most people now don't speak Hebrew. And, you know, if, if I, like I've said it before, if you, if someone's out there that speaks fluent Hebrew and, uh, you know, and they're following along with the ministry, I'll, I'll do all three, you know, I'll, I'll bless in Hebrew, Spanish and English. But uh, I know a lot of people that I know that, that watch and, uh, things like that, that, that they do speak Spanish. And, and so I want to bless them even in that language. So that was the reason why we changed that up. But um, I'm glad that blesses you, amen. And I'm glad that, that we've been been able to be a blessing to you guys. Uh, thank you all for being with us again. Uh, any other questions or comments before we finish out? Amen. So again, uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for the the prayers and uh, be looking out. Uh, this this week uh, I'll probably do a little live stream, uh, hopefully from the from the building, uh, even if it's gonna be a little short some, uh, just to just to kind of test see how it works and you guys can tell me how it looks. Uh, by the way, uh, any comments about uh, you know let me know in the comments or whatever, if, or message me how it looks with the little lights behind. I was getting kind of tired of the shadows behind me, and so you know just to see. How y'all like it on the internet if that looks okay. If not, we'll do something a little different. I'm uh, trying to get it to where it looks nicer and it doesn't look as distracting. So, and then, so, uh, Emily. Oh, he's Amen. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, Emily. Amen. So, well, until next Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Thank you.